So the uh, grounds here, um, we're near Grass Valley in California on the uh, Sierra foothills. Um, this is where we hold our ceremony here for the celebration of the elements. Uh, it's up on a ridge top, um, a long ridge. Um, it used to be a, a livestock farm, uh, mostly goats. Um, and then the current owners owned it for about 20 years. Um, it mostly just kept a few horses around. Right now there's one horse on the property. Um, as you can see behind me, there's this really large pond, um, which was used to water the livestock. And as you can see, it's a little bit full. And at the beginning of this weekend, it was totally bone dry after the end of the summer. Um, so we got about four days of rain, probably a total of about six inches. And it's actually collected quite a bit of water. And uh, I'm going to show you how it collected that water and talk about a little project we did um, to do a little experiment to see if we can help. Um, help this land recover. It is a little bit degraded um, because of the livestock activity. Um, if you look just over the fence over there um, where the livestock weren't allowed, you can see um, the undergrowth, the natural undergrowth of manzanita, um, poison oak, and uh, other native native uh, brush that has been basically eaten out of this entire area. It's mostly just grass, um, oak trees, these uh, Bull pines and ponderosas, and um, a lot of thistles because with just the horses wandering around, they tend to cherry pick. So they'll go around and eat all the good stuff up and leave the thistles. Um, so springtime, there's a lot of those. But um, that's that's for later on. There'd have to be good management and uh, um, other livestock operations done in a good way to help that recover. But I uh, did a little experiment on this here. A uh, swale. There's actually a swale that feeds into this pond, um, as you can see here. Um, I don't know whoever put this pond in and the swale system here. Um, it was over 20 years ago. I don't know if they were designing with permaculture, but um, there's definitely some permaculture principles that apply to this, this system here. So at this point, it's, it's more of a ditch because it is actually going downhill to feed into that pond. Um, so it's actually a little bit above the level of the pond. It's not like um, a swale that fills up when the pond fills up. It's more of a, um, a structure to collect water and divert it to the pond. So it comes all the way from over here, um, crosses under this little uh, road kind of rubble thing we've got to allow cars to pass over it. Uh, uh, when it was raining here, a couple days ago, when it was raining really good, this whole thing was full of water. Um, I didn't get any footage out because I didn't want to get my camera wet, but it was really cool to see the swale in action. I've never actually seen a swale working during a rainstorm event, but it was working quite well. Um, so from about this point on is where this truly becomes a swale. It's on contour. It's level across the landscape. And you can just barely see it at this point. Um, I believe it was probably hand dug or just very lightly dug with a small backhoe. Because um, it's a very small kind of trench. Almost just a little ditch. And very, very subtle. You kind of just see it going off in between, in between the trees there. But it's working um, as it should. So what we did from this point on... We've got this gate here, so we can close this off and keep that horse off of this pasture. It's just one horse, so she has plenty of pasture. There's 20 acres over there for her to, to chew on. So what we did was we put a mixture of seeds on this, on this berm, on the bottom side of the swale. So this swale here is going to collect water. It's going to settle in the ditch here and soak in and water the berm on the bottom side of the ditch. So what we did was we took a mixture of seeds. Um, I went down to Peaceful Valley Organic Farm Supply, uh, which is a big, huge organic seed supplier. They're actually here in Grass Valley. So we went down there and got some seeds from them. I got a cover crop mixture, uh, which was uh, Bushmaster peas, um, a type of bean, I forget, another type of pea, uh, hairy vetch, purple vetch, uh, common vetch and um, a type of ryegrass. So that's the cover crop mix. Um, 
mostly nitrogen fixers and then the ryegrass to just be kind of a ground cover. Um, which hopefully help, you know, fertilize the soil a little bit. It's just been degraded over time, so I'm not as fertile as it could be. And then I also mixed in uh, about a pound of daikon radish seeds into here as well. And we just uh, directly sowed those onto this berm. And the daikon radish, they'll, they'll produce a very large, um, you know, a big root, kind of like a big giant carrot. And uh, when the dirt here is not wet, right now it's actually quite soft. It's either muddy and soft or rock hard. And so those daikons will push that root down into the soil and create nice channels for water to soak in so the water doesn't just flow over the land. It actually soaks into the soil and um, kind of till up the soil in a way without actually disturbing it like tilling it would with a plow. And so we planted that on here. Uh, we direct seeded it. You can actually see some of the seeds in here, maybe. Um, we direct seeded it because it was raining. And you see it kind of push, the rain can push some of these seeds into the ground. Um, if it wasn't raining, if it was just going to be dry, my plan originally was to uh, create some seed balls. And so, um, seed balls are a method that Fukuoka, Masanobu Fukuoka, came with. He's the... Um, the kind of inventor and founder and uh, originator oh, so far, of the natural farming movement. Um, he started in Japan with rice farming and also with a uh, citrus orchard that had been degraded much like um, this oak pasture here. And uh, so he invented seed balls, which are uh, a method of, of protecting seeds when you're sowing them. So you take the seeds and you kind of coat them in a ball of clay and a little bit of compost to give them some food. And uh, that, that clay ball protects the seeds, keeps them from being eaten by birds, keeps them from being burned up in the sun. Um, and you can sow those over an area while it's dry. And then when it does rain, that clay will melt down. The seeds will drill into the ground because of the rain and uh, germinate. And it's a way to reseed vast areas really easily. Um, and what it does is allow nature to choose when those seeds will germinate. Instead of putting a bunch of seeds down and watering them when you want them to germinate, nature gets to decide and they germinate when they're ready, um, which will work better. So, Because it was raining, it was raining quite hard actually, um, we just sowed the seeds directly on the ground and kind of an experiment to see how, how well they'll do. Um, hopefully when I come back here in the spring for another ceremony we have, um, they'll be a lush, uh, lush line of green here on this, this burn down here. You can kind of see the swale from this point. Um, out of focus. Um, if you can see that, the swale is quite curved from this, this way. And uh, before the water was flowing, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a level or anything, but I could just tell by the way uh, this ditch here is patterned that it is on contour. Um, when you follow a line of contour, you usually get these curves. You know, back and forth snaking across the landscape following that that line of equal elevation and that's what makes it a swale and uh, that's really um, I talked about how this was uh, showed some really good examples of permaculture principles one of which which is to capture and store energy and materials water especially is a good energy and material to store um, water is life. And so what they've done, whoever installed this, is we have this road over here, which goes, continues up this ridge and collects a lot of water roads. Roads are huge water collectors and also huge water drainers. If you have a road going up the middle of a valley with a ditch next to it, that's going to take all that water that falls into that valley onto that road and drain it straight out the valley. And it can actually dry up a valley. It happens a lot. Um, because you're you're turning what was once um, a soft soil sponge that would soak up all the rain that fell onto it into a hardscape surface that will just drain all that water off. So what they've done here is there's a ditch that runs next to this road and collects the water off the road. They've actually diverted that water with this ditch um, and run it down uh, slightly downhill across this bank here 
and up into their pasture, into that swale. And so I actually came through when it was raining and I I uh, dug out this ditch a little bit because it was um, no longer collecting water like it should have. Um, it had been filled up with mulch and leaves, um, which will happen in a swale. It's actually one of the functions is you can collect organic matter um, in your, your level ditch there. But I came and I dug it out. As you can see, the, the dirt there, and it was it was flowing quite well, um, collecting a lot of water off this road when it was raining. And it was a really good experience to see, watch it happening, you know, watch the water flowing in, filling up the swale. And as it was flowing through this ditch, this ditch is actually a little bit more downhill. You could see it flowing faster. But then once it got to this point, it slowed down because this is a level 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 swale not a huge elevation change and so the water was moving very slowly less than a walking pace and uh, if it's moving any faster than that you're gonna get erosion and so that could have been you know why this this ditch you know whoever built the pond might have just built this ditch to collect water it's a any, any good pond builder is gonna build something to fill the pond as well and they could have put it on contour to just slow down that water and keep it from eroding or it could have been permaculture designed we don't really know the history so much but that's a really good example of good design you know that that pond will be full by the end of the winter and that will last in through the summer um, usually dries up by the end of summer because it does get quite hot here in California, Mediterranean climate. Um, but hopefully, over the years, we can we can do a little bit to change that, and maybe we can get that pond to stay full all year round. Um, so, just want to tell you about the little experiment we're doing here, and a little project we did um, to celebrate the earth element, help as well as the air, as well as the water, and the fire, because um, they're all connected, just like everything in nature. And, uh, Come back in the springtime and see how our, our planting is done. Um, see what is uh, what's coming up, what isn't, um, and that'll give us a better idea of what kind of seed mixture we might want to do for on a broader scale um, to spread out throughout the whole property. Um, and maybe we can get some trees planted along this swale and start start healing this degraded land a little bit. So um, I'm going to close this gate. When I'm not finished filming, <laughs> it seems to be stuck. Um, and that will keep that horse out of here so we can allow these plants to get established and uh, come back in the springtime and see what happens. So thank you for joining me um, for this. I wish I could have got a little more footage this, this uh, weekend, but with all the rain we got, we got, it is what it is. And thanks for watching. Um, if you like my videos and like to support my project, please go out to patreon.com slash Grimes and become a patron. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram at One Heart Fire. Uh, subscribe to the videos, leave a comment, like the video. Um, thanks, and I'll see you next time.